So we have two days here in Urban Trees and Honest Tree School and we've been talking about trees again. We talk about trees and trees each year, each week, each month and uh, this time many countries came together. Always people been planting trees in the cities. This is not logical, this is not uh, economically explainable, but people are spending um, best land and using energy, planting trees. You even grow them, sell to the people trees. Trees are growing for free, but people are buying. You are growing trees in Norway, facing uh, climate change and uh, problems of the trees. Yeah, you could answer at first uh, what's the reason why people want so much the trees. There is no explanation. We need electricity, that's why we dig the cables. We need uh, gas and all for living. Jens, do we need the trees? Oh, I think this, um, uh, this is only not a question of uh, electricity. Uh, yeah, we say this is a... Um, when you put uh, some trees in your garden, this is a kind of luxus. And um, but now and at this time we think everybody is talking about the climate change and we call it the greater effect and um, everybody is thinking about his own backyard, his own garden, what I can do, maybe uh, don't put too much gravel, too much concrete in your garden and um, we have a lot of discussion uh, with, with all the customers and they say uh, now leave the concrete uh, and uh, we planting more trees or shrubs for the for the climate and also for the um, they are thinking now further to think about uh, uh, the insects the bees that's now the next part on it and uh, we can do we can do it big but we can also do it uh, we can also do a lot of things in our private space so for concrete and asphalt, asphalt sellers this is a little bit decreasing now no they're still building houses a lot and um, I mean the land, the private land, it's asphalt and concrete is uh, getting out of the future gardens. This is uh, and more and more trees and shrubs should come in a landscape design because landscape design been quite uh, long about the, what kind of concrete or asphalt or terrace or whatever to use. And uh, now this is about what kind of trees and shrubs actually we should plant to save our outdoor design and space to keep it still livable in August, in a hot and... But we found out it's a question of the designer, you know. Last week I was on an... Um, there is a, a, a big competition on the, the 50 nicest gardens in, um, in, 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 in Germany. And the winner was a really, really small garden in, in Germany. This is only a, a question for the designers here to create a garden also in the third uh, row, you know. You can also have a, only a, sm a small space, but there's definitely enough t um, uh, room for trees. We already prepared in, in, in our nurseries. We, we, we make spellias, we are box-shaped uh, trees. Also for small spaces, we we, we doing umbrella shaped uh, uh, shrubs that uh, there there is enough space for for an, for for nearly every plant in in, in your garden. Torbjorn, what do you think? Norway, this is a rocky place. Yes, it is. Uh, do we people buy trees? I yes, mean. they buy more and more. Uh, uh, I think Jens summed it up quite well here, but I think uh, in addition to this, trees plays an uh, important role uh, of history. You can plant out a tree, if you plant an oak tree for instance, it can be standing there for several hundred years. So I think, uh, and people get attached to trees, they get feelings. You can see that in the cities when they need to take old trees, uh, for they take, t take them down, people get sorry. So I think uh, as a history factor, it's important and also for people's feelings. Lina, I, I'm even not asking you this question because I think almost everybody feels like uh, our gentlemen are saying, even uh, electric cable owners or uh, installers are feeling more and more that actually they also care about trees and they need trees. So more and more people are uh, the same mind that we have to have more and more trees in the cities. We made uh, in the uh, last two days the list of uh, 100 and uh, almost 20 trees that could grow in uh, conditions that uh, we as uh, experts from uh, different countries suppose that uh, could grow. But there are two ways we can go back to the native species and this is one way. Lithuania is about this and uh, many architects are about this and uh, of course uh, Tilia Cordata, Fraxinus excelsior, Olmos Glabra 
many local species that have been make, making uh, landscape and cities and uh, livable cities are dying now. Another way is uh, looking for a new species from somewhere, from different continents. They are too hot in Germany for uh, Populus Italica, and uh, it's, uh, they can grow now here, or Carpinus, it's too hot in uh, Germany. So this is another way we are looking for different species. They've been never in Estonia, they've been never growing um, in Latvia, but uh, they can grow now if you're looking out the window. Which direction would you choose and go? If uh, you have a limited budget, like we all, uh, trees are not priority. A gas, electricity, roads, schools, and all of this is priority. This is about, uh, I think we have to choose a little bit the direction uh, where to go. Native, local, and uh, work with this one, or try to find uh, new ones. Uh, actually, I like our local species a lot, okay. but as we see, they suffer more and more because the pathogens come also because of climate change mm -hmm. uh, into our area. And somehow uh, it seems that we have to pick more and more other species, which are not native ones. But the, the main thing is, uh, it seems to me that we are going to lose alleys because the trees we are planting on the alleys, they are usually from the same clone. Mm -hmm. And if any, any disease comes to the, that part um, or that kind of uh, allay, then all the trees will die accordingly. But uh, if we are going to plant different species on the same, same allay, we are not used to it, but maybe we have to get used to it, uh, then uh, not all the trees have the same pathogens or same uh, fungi, whatever. And we can save also the landscape in the cities. So allay is not the only way how we have to uh, plant uh, trees or something uh, uh, from woody plants. So I, I'm, I'm afraid but that uh, alleys, even though if they come from the historic uh, background and we people like the lines, uh, they have uh, not a long future anymore. Okay, so uh, if in uh, yeah, there is somebody in audience that is sitting here and uh, about that uh, Tilia Cordata is the only lime tree he wants to have in our uh, cities here in Baltic countries and I believe in other you are uh, not allowed to plant them in Estonia, in the cities. Yeah, because it can be affected by Nectria and, uh, and they always thought that this is the only species that... Uh, so there is a conflict actually that uh, we are all three Baltic countries and on uh, one side there is uh, one tree you are not allowed to plant and another one you are allowed to plant only this one and we are Latvia, we are uh, for instance in between and we, we are not choosing now, we are planting uh, both of them. So this is something what uh, Actually, we, we as experts, we have still discussion going on, right? Which direction to go? And I think this discussion will be always because uh, we don't know which uh, way will work the better. Actually, I would say that there is no correct answer. Mm -hmm. There are It's not black or white, right? Yeah, that's it. And we have different uh, possibilities, but we have to choose the best option from the bad options maybe it's uh, this is the main thing yeah it's uh, I, I think this is really a question of try and error you know and uh, we also in our nursery we tried some new varieties uh, um, uh, just to plant them and we found out they didn't grow and we leave it and uh, this is all always the same what you can do on the project you know don't put hundred of trees in one spot that's not worth and you're losing a lot of money but when you try maybe 10 trees in the in a special spot and to find out how it works and uh, this special climate in this special area in this in this town so and you are uh, talking about your project with the climate trees that you are checking yeah, 30, yeah, 30 yeah, six and different species and uh, and yeah that's what the what uh, all the cities uh, does they are taking some of them they are they are, they are test them and um, you know when we do it in our nursery we 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 can do it what we think but 
the situation then in, on, in, in the cities are totally different, you know. There's much more concrete than in our fields. There's too much pressure, pressure from, the, from, the, from the traffic, all the pollution. And, um, then, and, and also the watering is the main thing, you know. We of, of course, we are watering uh, our trees in the, in the nursery when, it's, it's, when it is necessary. Uh, I'm sure not every government, not every city has the money. They put a lot of trees maybe on their plant, a lot of yes, trees. This is a story about that we are finding the money and millions of euros actually for to buy the trees, to plant the trees. Right. But watering is, uh, we found it out in Latvia and Labikoki team that to give water to the trees, you need at least 50, 100 euros a year. Right. And if you have only money to plant them and not money to water them, hmm. So what happens, you are losing all of those trees. So, and there again is one way to find money, another way to find the trees that can survive without watering, right? And, uh, yeah. But those, what we found out in the last two days, are very aggressive trees. And again, there is uh, people against putting in uh, aggressive trees like uh, red oak or Quercus uh, rubra or uh, Robinia pseudocacia or uh, Acer negundo, yeah. Uh, you asked uh, Lin about if which way we should take. Yeah, what's your? I think yeah, it's a combination. I think it's important that we use, as we talked about yesterday, the pioneer sorts, some sorts that grow quickly up, but we also have to use some of the the clones and selections we had done over together in so Europe. So it's 50-50. I, and I think your nursery is doing this. I learned it in uh, Norway from uh, Torbjörn you and uh, all of your politics in uh, Norway about the trees that you are growing. Um, very basic trees, actually. Yeah, we Apopolos, do. Betulos, yeah. and uh, trees, acers, yeah. basic acer platanides. You are growing and planting in a tree cities, and this is uh, something that actually landscape architects maybe want, hmm. but uh, nurseries don't have those trees in Europe. No. Quite often in Latvia, you cannot buy a basic uh, Salix caprea. No. Nowhere. No. And uh, but this is a very, very extremely strong tree. Yeah. A society is accepting it because this is actually for society. This is only about healthy and growing trees that are not uh, asking money for uh, water for um, all of the weeding, uh, fertilizing, and uh, all of this. In Norway, it's a natural result because of our hard, hard climate. So we have to use those local varieties that have been standing there for thousands of years. And it works. We have done like this in some decades already. So it's, so it's working fine and the landscape architect seems to do it more and more. And people are accepting that there is not uh, Sakura, Magnolia, yeah, yeah. all of this, but there is the same tree. Yeah, yeah. They bought it, they planted it in the middle of the city, the same growing in a yeah. forest side. or. Uh, in the cities you will also see some Japanese cherry trees and so on, but this along the roads... This exclusive parts of yes, the... Yes, right? of course. That we can afford, take care or cover yeah. if it's a frost is coming or all of this uh, breathing water or whatever. This is something a little bit like a very fancy clothes that we all have at the home, but mm. this is not every day and every street that no, we are wearing. No. They, this is too expensive. Yeah, it might be, because when you plant a tree, uh, you have to see it on the long run, because the cost of a tree uh, might be one thing, but as we mentioned, the uh, maintenance that you'll do maybe the next 50 years in the city, that will be a <laughs> very large uh, amount of the total cost of the tree. Jens, are your nursery also starting to grow basic uh, species? I know you have uh, 600 hectares of uh, trees. Is it more and more of those hectares are planted with a uh, basic trees, with a uh, strong, with not maybe so beautiful, maybe available also in forest sites and uh, people like collect things that are not everywhere and I think this is what happened also with those city trees that we are collecting rare species beautiful species with beautiful flowers but um, as we know they need more care than we can provide usually from your fields is it uh, coming in Pinus silvestris, uh, betula pendula all of those basic things again. Yeah, we, we produce them um, um, as long as our customers ask for it. Robinia is it more asked for? Maybe that's a yeah. question. Yeah, and, um, and you know, uh, I told you yesterday, we are losing some varieties now. We don't produce them anymore. Uh, the, the ash trees and also the 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 um, the Aesculus and um, it's not worth to do it anymore because they're definitely dying. They're di dying maybe not in our nursery, but they're dying definitely then on the project. And um, 
Uh, and that's the reason that we are um, um, uh, think about on new varieties and we are looking for it. And, um, and we have also the discussion about some historical people They say, oh, come on the oak trees, we had to cut them down because we're building up a new road and, uh, and they are growing, they are really good. And we, and we talked to them and we talked, uh, told him, you can't do it, be you know, before 100 years when, you, when the, the oak tree is planted, there are definitely different conditions than today and, uh, and they're not growing anymore. And that's what we are thinking about it, and um, and we give the advice to to the to our customers. Some 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 of them they're following us. Some of them they're not, and this costs mostly a lot of money. Lena, biggest problems. You were just showing the presentation about problem problems uh, what we are having. We are planting. We are finding. We are uh, finding money. We are planting trees. We are making outdoor space, but trees are dying. And um, if we looking at this. What are the biggest mistakes? What are people uh, usually doing wrong or uh, could do better to have beautiful trees in the cities? What's, what's your observation? Actually, I think that nobody thinks about the root system uh, and uh, all, the, all the problems come from there. Uh, people only can see that there are problems in, uh, in the crown, but they never think that it comes from the roots. This is the first thing, and and also uh, people can't realize that uh, in nature uh, trees have several parts, and, and you have to follow the nature where those parts of the trees uh, are situated in the in the soil. For instance, root color; it has to be always. Uh, in the cities, we often miss the root color, but this is one third of a tree. If you look at the biology, or if you look at the tree roots, root color and the top of it, or a trunk and branch. Yeah, but root color is the key issue. If, if it's too low, uh, there are all the uh, you problems. You are showing all those pictures with digging down trees, and I think this approximately is uh, more than half of trees in the cities are too deep, right? And yeah, um, but... Maybe 90% in some... Um, but in the past, when people were planting bare root trees, they never did that kind of mistakes. Okay, so they, but so they, are, the they are trusting uh, the root balls and they even maybe don't have an idea that uh, somewhere else can be uh, the root collar somewhere in the deep. You as a grower, is it uh, easier to make a root ball by sometimes having a soil or is it because of replanting? But I know that some uh, nurseries have it and uh, if a gardeners are not opening that there is a uh, soil a little bit above the actually level. Is it a technology or why is it? Or, uh, I can speak for myself to say it's it's not easy to make it perfect. You always have to have a bit soil over. Yeah. I'm not sure what your experience yeah. is. Yeah, that's the reason when when we send the, the trees then to our customers, they say put it in a, a, a little bit higher in, in the hole and make it a little bit, um, open a little bit the wire, and uh, but leave it, leave it. And, and um, uh, yeah, normally d this works. So, a little bit open, keep it, but see where the cooler is, right? This is so important. And this is not expensive. We are spending money bringing tree, buying, choosing mm. right tree to the right place. Uh, of course, this is another topic. Friends from uh, Poland are, are showing that only 10% of trees that we are planting are successful afterwards because they are on the right place, right tree. This is another topic what we have to talk. But uh, checking the root color, I think this is one of the easiest things. Another one is like you were showing, protecting from uh, grass cutters, mulching it if it's possible. This is something what everybody of us can do and uh, it's not too expensive. And, and I think the good relationship between uh, the nurseries, the landscape architects, the constructors, the, the customers, that you know what, um, what you are doing, uh, then you trust e each other and you, I'm sure, and also to mostly when the project is big enough, we going to the project and have a look before we send the trees and to give maybe a kind of advice of what maybe can help the tree to, to, to grow. I have a last question. We have a list. We made a list of our top trees discussing three days. And um, if we could go through we have made um, new for the site or new from Norway, Estonia, Latvia, Poland, uh, 
maybe Germany is uh, more uh, so than we are, and so you have already in Germany some of those trees, but we have uh, so new trees, and uh, we have uh, top trees that we are um, having after a discussion and voting, and if we could go quickly through, and each of you could say, is this a tree you really believe, also in Estonia, Norway, Germany, from your point of view, and one of them is uh, Pinus Silvestris, uh, most votes going for a pine we have everywhere, and this is a pine with orange trunk, there is some problems with the salt in the winters, but this is, uh, we can uh, have it, we have it from uh, I don't know, Finland till Portugal, it's growing, it's very in the sand, or in the torf, or in the water, or uh, no water. Any comments about this? Yeah, this is a tree definitely you have to be careful that, um, that you don't plant them too deep. Yeah. This will be affected really, really uh, quickly and help them with the, with the soil. We, co we talked about uh, special th um, uh, fertilizer, special mucoriza fungi. Uh, this helps this tree to grow. Definitely, and I'm looking forward to see them in um, in LA uh, beside the road. Yeah, uh, this it is, will be great. We are still having some. Uh, I don't know what is stopping us, but we, we don't plant wintergreen or pizzas or pine trees or yeah, pine trees in a row, rows in um, or avenues or um, street side. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Maybe we should start to change a little bit uh, what we have uh, in our heads and. Um, Another tree is uh, Betula pendula, a basic birch. This is Scandinavia, Estonia, Latvia, actually we have everywhere. And in Germany, I think it's the same. Yeah, it? yeah I told you the, the, they are quite, uh, quite uh, popular now, but you have to be care, careful a little bit uh, uh, the time when you plant this tree. The best time is Best is, time is, is seeds, spring. right? Then they go on the <laughs> roofs yeah, as yeah, well. Then, then but you need a little bit of time. Uh, now, and uh, we have a lot of discussion about betula, especially in private gardens, about the allergic um, okay. uh, things. Then um, yeah, some of them, they are allergic to, to, to so betulas. Told you, uh, you have experience in Norway about betula, you're planting more and more. I, I understood from your presentation, you have this uh, betula that Carly yes, comes out. Yes, uh, about the pioneer sort, so I have to add one okay. thing. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, it's very important that you use local material because a betula pendula is not the same in the northern part in Norway as yeah, you have south in Germany yeah. or in you Poland. You are pruning it in the hedges. I have yeah, <laughs> but not only that, it's a very big difference about the uh, sun and the uh, length of the day and so on. So it's very important that you always try to find the local material and the local seed. It's uh, difficult to move or replant the big betulas, of course, and this is about the um, yes. species, what do you have, but um, still this is all the betulas actually are um, something what we could start to think about. There's not a, and I have to think about this as well because betula for me was uh, not the tree in the city yeah. so far. But uh, and betula pendula is not betula pendula. It can be very big difference from. Uh, which it's a beautiful seed tree with a white colored trunk, yeah. so right? yeah. and we have to change how we see yeah. this. Alnus glutinosa is another one. Uh, what we found out in discussions, Alnus glutinosa and uh, vertical ones from Finland. You have them in Norway, Estonia as well. So what uh, about the glutinosa, Alnus glutinosa, Germany, yeah. perspective? No, it's getting more and more popular now. Um, there, um, I think Alnus glutinosa and there's another one a little bit later, Alnus speti, no, no, yeah, Alnus speti. They're getting now, they are quite, quite popular and um, uh, don't worry about uh, when it is maybe a little bit too dry, they they can, uh, they, uh, strong they, ones. they are really strong, yeah. Okay, thank you. We have a Populus tremula erecta or tremula tall, this is a very, very basic tree, again, like a betula pendula, populus tremula, erecta, a little bit more narrow. Everybody happy? Yeah, yeah what was quite common in, in the 80s, then um, nobody knows anymore about popular tremula erecta, uh, erecta and it's getting now really popular again. So even uh, populus italica fastigiata is changed by erecta in Germany now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Robinia pseudo acacia is the next one. I know in Russia this is also it's it's a tree that can hold the heat. Uh, ecologists don't like it because it's aggressive in Lithuania. You can cut it down wherever you find it. Even the big ones they are protected in Latvia in Riga. We have uh, from one meter ninety circumference is protected from a state. So we are very close to Lithuania. We almost understand what they are talking about. But we have totally different approach to the, this tree. The same with the red oak. 
What do you think about, uh, is there a future? I know that... Uh, For Robinia? Yeah. Yeah, especially the varieties, the, the yellow one, the freesia, the red one, the casque rouge, definitely. Um, and this is a sign, right? People are all be, always been cloned. I know in Germany you've been having them for decades in the streets, so they are a little bit aggressive roots, breaking asphalt. But this and is also a question of, of uh, also a question of the soil. When you have a good prepared uh, planting hole, then you don't have any problems about uh, the roots on, 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 on the surface. And we have to have some trees, so right, so Robinia is coming up. We are again looking at those aggressive trees because there is no other choice. It's mm. too hot for other trees and uh, too expensive. But there is one tree, uh, number seven, uh, that we have always had. This is and its top seller bean, and I think it's going to stay. It's Tilia europea pallida. Yeah, this is... Uh... And uh, of course, uh, yesterday we were talking with uh, Estonian girls and uh, if the tilia is having a big problem, like Almos, Olmos, uh, Glabra, or uh, Fraxinus, or then we have a big problem. Mm -hmm. Latvia, Riga, Estonia, big cities, Russia, we have no trees left. This is a desert afterwards, so we have to get some more species. So if you are planting trees, tilia is nice, but uh, be careful, don't plant only tilia, right? And uh, not only pallida. Quercus robur, and especially pyramidalis, and uh, vertical ones, is this, uh, Still with sudden oak death and all of this, Lina, what do you think? Or Still don't have sudden uh, oak. Uh, we have uh, it. You have it? Yes, we, we have don't, it. We, that, we yeah. don't have it and uh, still we like uh, Quercus Robur. It's like a hero in our country, hero we, of the trees. Is, we have the problems, we know where it will go, but we still, I think, will plant it because this is the most popular uh, tree. It's an icon of uh, human power. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, and everybody likes it. And we even, uh, as we had the anniversary, 100 years anniversary, a lot of people planted 100 uh, trees. They sold parks. out in Latvia also. Yeah, <laughs> so it was so popular. Uh, hopefully they survive all. Uh, but uh, yes, but I'm not sure that it's the best option for the LA's. Okay. Main. So, this is a German experience, right? You, you had, uh, especially in Netherlands, they had uh, almost glabra, so they died, they planted fraxinos, it uh, died, they planted oaks, and now the um, caterpillars and uh, here, so they have to cut all the oaks again. No, they don't cut them down, but you have to be careful where you plant the Quercus robo, and especially when you plant them new, you have to look after them for the next three or five years definitely you don't you, you, mean you can't leave them alone and, uh, yeah watering care. and and you have to be uh, and yeah that's 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 the main thing that's um espe and and uh, especially quercus robo is really hard to as in in in, in, the, in the first the hard for the first three and five years but then it's difficult to kill it as well right so is this yeah of course yeah of course <laughs> They are, um, yeah, it's a nice tree, definitely, but you have to think on the on the other quirk. And it's not in the tree. top three anymore, so this is something telling. This yeah, is a little bit yeah, I wasn't down. surprised. I, yeah, I thought other trees are a little bit more on the top. <laughs> so, yes, this is uh, how it came out. So, Pinus nigra is, uh, or black pine, is uh, one of the trees. No? Lina? No? It's getting now better in, in because this really dark, dark green, it's getting really good and okay. it looks really fantastic, especially when you when you have them umbrella shaped or when uh, the, the landscape architects, they like it now. But this is about the pines at all in the city, so right, so if you start with Pinus Silvestris so Pinus Nigra, there are other pines uh, that could be or uh, still against it or? Against because we brought a uh, lot of needle blasts together with Pinus Nigra okay. and it jumped over into our local Pinus Silvestris so uh, we are very afraid of that it, uh, it will kill uh, our uh, okay. uh, forests as well. So you still Pinus Silvestris is the uh, top if, it, if you would choose from uh, yeah. green trees? Okay. Then is uh, Acer Satol is a uh, very strong tree. We know they are uh, very aggressive. They're taking over other forests and uh, all of this, and uh, that's why they are actually useful in the cities. This is a very aggressive uh, place. So Acer Ginella is one of them. This is a small size tree. This is uh, also one of the things that people like. People like more and more uh, landscape architects and uh, householders. They have trees, but not big ones, right? That uh, can damage something uh, 50 years from uh, planting. No problems with this? Is this a future it, it's, tree? It seems to be a survivor. 
Yeah, it's uh, getting better and better. Sorbos uh, Dodongs, this is a uh, top seller and uh, one of the trees that is compromised. It's strong, it's beautiful and uh, birds can eat and uh, bees can get some flowers and uh, I think no complaints about this one. Yeah. Not Only yet. complain it's sold out or something yeah. like this and uh, problems uh, with Ervinia to buy it from uh, other countries. But uh, Acer Platonides is the next one and this is a basic um, Acer, a big tree, aggressive tree not always planted in Estonia. Do you plant them or...? Uh? Actually not in, into the alleys, not as, as a street tree. Yeah, and I think we, we as well. And this is something what I have to think in Russia. Do you plant Atsepodonides? Atsepodonides, yeah. yeah. Because you have not so big spectrum to choose from, right? And uh, I think we as well in Latvia, Estonia and uh, I saw you planting them in Norway so far, a um, thousand kilometers or hundred kilometers before, after the forest circle. Mm. So that when you have not so many trees left, you are looking what's a very strong ones. And Acer Platinum, this is a strong one and uh, can uh, stay long without water and all but of it this. It doesn't tolerate a lot of the... Problems that we have in uh, cities uh, about yeah, south. City, and, yeah, uh, so it has some complications in the cities. Pseudoplatanus is uh, Norwegian uh, maple. is um, also something what we have to think about. It's popular. Uh, it's getting uh, quite warm climate here as well in Latvia, so we can go with this yeah. one as well. Yeah, it's going. Uh, we we sell Arza Pseudoplatanus quite well, and um, also Arza Platonides. Uh, it's different to your countries, and uh, uh, yeah, of course, especially Arza Platanus, you have to be ca uh, careful with the the soil what they use. That's that's the main thing. And uh, Norway it seems to be too much invasive, so we're not allowed to plant it anymore. But it was very popular in the southern and western part before, but not in our region. All the fractions are gone, but fractions Pennsylvania is still in a list and uh, we hope this will uh, be more resistant and uh, let's plant it. If people want to have something still big and strong and uh, or um, yeah, strong, let's hope that it's strong enough to fight against insects. But um, then comes the small trees, all the maluses and um, one of them is Rudolf. Great trees. They are wonderful. They are blooming every year. And the leaf color is also uh, not green, a little bit uh, uh, red. And they never grow big. And this is... This is partly good. I <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Big. But, but uh, in some places it's very uh, yeah. useful if they don't grow too big. Quercus rubra. Also a little bit reddish. Goes big. I like this, that the second part of it goes big. We, in the cities we need a lot of photosynthesis. I think this is what could save the cities. It's a uh, lot of photosynthesis makes all this wet air and uh, all the good stuff what we need from the trees. But still, for neighbor countries, again, you can fell it whenever you want, even a big one. In Latvia it's protected when it's getting two meter uh, circumferences or something like this. Estonia, Norway. Germany, what do you think about red oak? This is one of the pop possibilities to have uh, big trees. And as the same about uh, Quercus palustris. This mm. is, uh, so it's a better option to plant them on their lays than into the, uh, some uh, parks because it gets very aggressive. So it's aggressive trees, let's keep them yeah, it, in the streets, it, right? Yeah, better, better to have because it can be like a weed uh, and it can take over all, all the park, uh, parks. Of and, course, uh, and, squirrels and, uh, can help them yeah. in anyway. And in Norway, they think it's too invasive as well. So they're not so very happy. But for still planting. planting some? Still planting some, but it's on the borderline of that okay. list. So I think in some years ah, it might be forbidden. One happy person like Lithuania. <laughs> okay. So uh, Quercus uh, rubra can uh, be hot potato or discussion in next uh, years as well in other countries where it's still allowed to plant it. Salix is uh, one of the last opportunities uh, from a big Salix family. We have many Salixes, uh, Fragilis, Alba different species. Um, is this really a tree for a city? This is a question. It's not popular till now to plant them in a city, but uh, on the street side. If there is enough, n enough space, there can be a good, good option, but okay. you need much space, especially the Bulata, which get the same width and as the height. The good thing is it's a quick grower, and you have to know that uh, it, it shouldn't grow too old. 
-hmm. You can take it away. Uh, you have to take it away better than uh, just uh, deal with that ma maintenance stuff because it's quite expensive to have when it you have in the to shape. Start the yeah, yeah. So, but, but we were talking about those street sites and collecting rainwater, and this is one of the absorbers of water and could grow in um, standing yeah, water. Yeah, and, and all, uh, all the solixes can can help you in that way. But anyway, it, it needs a space. Okay. And, the, and you so can't. Landscape architects in specific places. This is a tree for you. I quickly go to, through the another trees that we are recommending, and if landscape artists or designers or gardeners listening, so those are the trees we are thinking about. After those two days, this is Ginkgo biloba, Pinus mugo, Tuyo occidentalis, even in the streets, and Acer campestre, Acer rubrum, Corylus colurna, one of the also trees that we don't have on the streets so far, but you have in Germany, right? So, and uh, Padus maki, Pyrus communis, Quercus palustris, Salix alba, Vitellina, Salix caprea, Salix fraglis, Bulata, Tilia cordata, Green spire, Tilia platyphyllos, and others. And, um, about the new ones uh, that are, uh, we don't have so much now, Alnus glutinosa saccari is one of those. Uh, Alnus speti, popular in Germany. This is a very beautiful tree. Yep. Alnus means um, need not so much uh, energy to have it. Yep. And uh, very big, nice leaves and all of this. Bigger leaves have a catal pabignoides. Yeah. Is this a climate tree also? Uh, I'm not really sure. No, no, I don't think so. I think the other, I, I, I'm, there's another one. Do we, we have is this, a no, no, no. With all huge leaves is Paulovnia tomentosa. Okay. This is uh, uh, with um, uh, blue, blue flowers on. This winter gives opportunity for Paulovnia to come to Riga, I yeah. think. But and um, um, and it, this getting now really, really popular now. And um, um, especially because we, ha we have you, you can cool your place, you know. Okay, that's, big that's leaves means a lot really of really big leaves, bigger atmosphere. than catalpa. Certifilum, this is a japonicum. This is one of the trees that we have uh, good experience in um, holding um, cold winters. Yeah, and especially it's nice in, in, in autumn, and the smell is nice. So if you have a small street or uh, this is something you could try, this is not a, never going to be a big tree. Um, Gledicia is. Uh, Another uh, extreme, this is like Robinia, even uh, harder, even uh, mo more problematic for arborists to prune it. This is an uh, aggressive tree, but maybe we will end with this one, right? Because uh, if it's getting hotter and hotter, it's even in Russia. Moscow will be in Gledicius, maybe. <coughs> Wait for it. Wait Not, for yet. It. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but uh, Austria is... Uh, Austria Carpinifolia is something instead of Carpinus Los betulus, Beatles, you are yeah. having it more and more. Yep. And it means uh, Carpinus is too hot in your country for Carpinus betulus. Yes, betulus too polis. dry. It's too, too shallow dry. roots. It's, yeah, and uh, the thing is, uh, Carpinus betulus will work uh, like a hedge, definitely. But I'm not really sure it will be working any, any longer um, like a tree. Uh, I think in, in, in 10, 15 years, they struggle definitely. We have the same now with Fagos, um, and that's the reason that we are thinking about um, that uh, Austria Carpinifolia will be the next Carpinus Betelus. Okay. You have a long uh, tradition with plane trees, Platanus Atrifolia. We have growing one outdoors here and it's moving. We have um, some uh, experience already in Latvia, Estonia, some no. not yet, but. Uh, this winter, I think, is giving again a big chance, and this is a strong tree. Pyrus, all the Pyrus uh, family with uh, this is Salicifolia pendula, or uh, some simply Salicifolia. This is an exciting tree, mm -hmm. very little experience. Last, all of this uh, list we will put also uh, under this uh, in comments, so you can comment all of those trees. If you have good experience, put the pictures. I think this is experience what we all need. We need to find strong trees, future trees, the climate changing, so we need a new climate for new climate, new trees, and uh, that's an experience we nobody of us have. If you have some experience with some of those trees, or you can add some of them new or not tried before. And uh, we have uh, also Quercus uh, bimondorum from uh, Poland, and uh, Quercus cercis, Robinia pseudocacia, another one, and uh, Salix hybrids, Ural from uh, Russia selected, selected, so this is exciting. and. Uh, of course, uh, Ulmus rebona, because without Ulmus at all, it's not possible to have a beautiful outdoor space. And uh, all the resist uh, Ulmus, I think we have to try. Estonians are trying, uh, you have experience, of course you have. And I think uh, many more trees, but at least there is hope 
After having, uh, in beginning, 35 trees, we have 36 climate trees now in Germany experimental field. We found after a two-day work that we have 120 trees, many more shrubs or small trees. Is there a hope? This is the last uh, question because uh, each time, even two days ago when we met and we were talking and uh, I was saying, oh, Fagus sylvatica is a beautiful tree. In Latvia we have it as, as a tree of a year. And he said, oh no, this is in Sweden problems, Germany, this is no future for Fagus sylvatica. I, each time when I'm founding some beautiful tree that gives me a hope that the cities will be good, it's enough to meet one expert and this is no more hope. All of trees, if we go through Olmos, Fraxinus, Quercus, Tilia, all, Alnus, Phytophthora, or whatever, there is a beautiful tree and there is a problem, not plant. We found 120 trees, is there a hope? What do you think? This is the last question and then you go to plane. Plane <laughs> otherwise is leaving. Yeah, definitely there's a question, but, uh, um, I think this is only now the beginning, you know. Uh, maybe when, when you, when you, when you are thinking about maybe when we met each other in one year or in two years again, and we will be more depressed. And, and no, 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 no. Um, Twelve, 12 trees left. I'm, I'm sure there are some of the trees on this list are not more on this list, and there came there are some new one on, and um, we are looking the, uh, all the time for new varieties and to try how how it can maybe to grow them in our in our nursery the main thing is uh, to bring our knowledge to the public that's the main thing that's to that everybody can help only when it is only a, um, a little step when the tree in your in in your front from your house this is not your own it's maybe the owner is the government or the city uh, and you see they are struggling in the summer, give him some water, don't wait. Yes, go and give some <laughs> and water. And uh, give them this some water simple. and also do something in your backyard and do... Um, Break um, some asphalt up and put some yeah, yeah, gladiatia that's, that's, or... That's it and um, that's, you know, we, we all in here, we, are, we know that the, how necessary it is to grow trees and to make it greener, but we have to bring our knowledge to the to the to the public. That's the main thing, and uh, that's Thank our. Thank you for doing work. this, Jens. Pardon? Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Your <laughs> plane course. is leaving, but you are giving this to the public. This is appreciated. Torbjorn, you, there's hope. You are protecting I, I very so. much the Norway, and uh, all yeah. the strategy of Norway is protecting the market. You yes. can uh, sell only your own trees, mostly. Yeah. Is this a strategy and? Uh, <sighs> It can be a part of a strategy. It's you never not know like is it going to be the right one. So, but I, I think the very many things that we have done protecting trees has been very successful. We have many trees in Norway without any disease, like the ro rowans and the maltses. We have disease-free good selections. Uh, and in addition to this, I think it's very important that we, when we have like Beatula pendula or Pinus silvestris, Alnus glutinosa, we always choose local selections and use local seeds wherever it's possible. I think it's very important. You just don't want German trees to come. It's to not Norway. only about that, but okay. <laughs> the trees that uh, that you can see growing around you, it's the reason why they grow there. Okay. They're suited for the climate. So landscape architects, look what kind of trees grow there. This is, you like this, right? And plant them. This is uh, what it's all about. Yeah. Lina. There is always hope. I always think. hope. Yeah. Good. We are and best optimists. Yeah. 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 And yes, I, I like also that uh, uh, Norway is uh, doing that kind of uh, poli policy that they are protecting their own production. We have not, uh, don't have that kind of chance because most of the production comes from abroad and we, we even don't have the connection with the nurseries uh, where the produc production is coming from and uh, I, I think this is a big problem for us because uh, we, we never know where this production comes from uh, and sometimes they are just um, removing labels and we find out uh, in, in the future that uh, it, so could, it, it could be from Italy. But new regulation is asking that each tree, when you are buying a tree now, has a label where it's coming from and uh, something is being yeah. done, I think, also in Estonia and Latvia and about this and yeah. in Norway. It, it, it has to be, but uh, we, we also know that paper, you can, you can print anything on the paper. Uh, so uh, people uh, have to be aware that the plant is uh, uh, in the good quality or good uh, good plant, but uh, 
I'm not so sure that uh, it uh, it happens when we don't have their our own nursery or that kind of system like Norway has that they are uh, having the special organization that helps them to protect their own production. This is one topic uh, each of our countries should talk yeah, about. Yeah, Maybe this that's is about it. Yeah. Introducing local trees, of course, we have to, I think, and this is a conclusion, at least for me, after those two days. We cannot only replant the trees that we have all around. The Tilia cordata, Fraxinus excelsior, we, we can see that we cannot ignore. They are dying and uh, we, we have problems. So looking for a new ones, we cannot ignore this one. Otherwise, and I mean, even in Norway, where you protecting, you have these experiments with having all trees from all the globe, right? And uh, with the meta sequoias on all of this in Oslo center. So even uh, Norway, by protecting, is open for uh, new ideas, for new trees, for new hope. Because we have to be ready that uh, even the very beautiful and strong trees that we have had so far can get a big problems. And this happened in the uh, last decade with many strong trees. So I think we keep both ways. This is my conclusion. We go, uh, we have, keep looking with one eye what's going on, what's going uh, in Norway, what's in Scania, what's in Copenhagen, Germany. You look what's going on in America, Japan, what, wherever, and uh, we, with another eye, we are looking what's native, what is strong, what we can retry, because maybe there is another 10, 20 years and uh, Tilia Cordata is feeling again good because of, who knows, electric cars are changing the climate in the cities. And I think this is already happening 2025, five years from now. No more diesels, no more uh, other things, and maybe there's a hope for our local trees. Let's hope. And uh, let's try a new one. And thank you for attention. Big applause for our uh, teachers. And see you soon again. Okay, thank you very much. Now you have to go to the plane. Oh no, it's too late. Now I have to run. <laughs>